Wow. Over 16,000 folks in here to get the Buffalo Bandits off on a chance to three-peat against the Detroit Turbos in the first playoff game for the Mill. This is Les Bartley. What a successful record he has had. Took over as head coach for the Bandits after the first three games of their first year. Went 22 straight games without losing. Shane Sanderson, the Turbos head coach, has turned this team into the surprise team in the major indoor lacrosse league. I'm Lee Felsmo along with Christy Lee. This is our Deuce presentation on the mothership ESPN. We are showing you one of the most exciting sports going. Who's who? Well, Detroit is the purple and the silver. And the Bandits, the home team, in the orange-shouldered black jerseys. First base off of the game, controlled by Detroit. They work it down. Oh, this is Tony, number two, gets it all the way across the cylinder. They're shooting at a four by four and a half foot goal. Geary starts at the goal, and he makes the first save, the rebound shot. Not good. Look at the defense for the Buffalo Bandits. They will level most of the offensive players if they stand around in front of the goal. This was Stu Aird. He's 37 years old this month. The oldest player in the league, but a tremendous veteran is having an all-pro year. He's second-team all-pro. Those selections just made last week. Goalies coming off and being hot early on. As they make the first saves. He makes his first save. You'll see an off at halftime. You'll see the full teams voted by the players of the league. Detroit in their second offensive set. They start deep in the corners, try to get into Dowling. He couldn't control. Look at the defense for Buffalo. Right here. Push. Push call. We'll stay here. 30-second shot clock. You've got to hit the four-and-a-half-foot goal within 30 seconds. Look at all the activity here in Detroit. Trying to get the ball into the cylinder. Buffalo under heavy orders by Coach Les Bartley to clear out the cylinder. He wants cross checks on anybody in that dangerous area. And receiving 17 is Terry Bullen, captain. One of the captains for the Detroit Turbos. It's the orange ball. Orange ball. Orange ball. Orange here. We have a crease violation. Rich Tamburino. We have Mike, the head referee, Rich Tamburino. He will be making the calls. You'll hear what it's like for him to really take charge of the field. All right, so they started too quickly. They give it back to Andy Shaughnessy. And now, less than two minutes into the first quarter, no score. It'll be the second offensive set for the Bandits. This is Hamley of that first unit of theirs. Troy accordingly takes it down. It gets mugged by Detroit. No call. Finally, they get one. Fox, Bill Fox, referee, calls it against Dowling, number 19. He gets two minutes into the penalty box. Watch Dowling play defense. The move inside by accordingly. He gets some space, and he is pulled down from behind. Holding is the call. Lee accordingly talking to the referee, saying, let's go. Make the call, and he did make the call. Two minutes on Dow offensive star. This will put the power play in motion for Buffalo. It'll be triggered up top by Hammer Hamley, number 28. This is Dalton 32 in the Buffalo orange and black. Five against four as they take their first shot against Dietrich. A little bit wide. This will be a two-minute power play. They play against a box zone. This is Tavares, Mr. MVP. The Hammer with the juke move gets inside. Again, wide. They missed the right pipe twice. Terry Bullen now will settle down. He goes for the offensive end to Adam Mueller. Mueller against Hamley. Can't pick it up. Ball squirts the ball back to Geary. He's out and being pushed by Detroit. Leveled by another player. Geary comes up and gives it off to Belton. That was a call on Jacobs. I don't know if you saw it on the left of the screen. It's a delayed call. They get a shot. Belton just takes it against Dietrich. This will put two men in the penalty box. Detroit coming out a little bit nasty, and that's their reputation. They're the nasty boys, as well as the Wild Bunch. Watch the right-hand corner. Geary has it, but watch the players behind there. Well, they whack Tavares as they run by, and that will put number 21, Wayne Jacobs. So two, the Wild Bunch, are now spending some time getting splitters on the bench, the penalty bench. Now it's five against three. They'll get a good shot here. Great, a great defensive move by Terry Bullen. It was five on three, and Hamley took a pitiful shot right at the stick of Terry Bullen. 
Plenty of time left, though. One minute on the first penalty, 140 on the second. Les Bartley, the coach of Buffalo, preaches patience here. Even though you have five against three, don't force the shots. Again, they miss to the right pipe. The shot clock winding down to 14. Since they didn't hit the face of the goal, time is now moving down. This is to Darius Kilgore. All the way down. Easy. For John Tavares, one to nothing, Buffalo leads. Power play motion sets up Tavares all alone. Kilgore with a look away feed. Look at the open net. Nothing but rope for Tavares. The key is to get the feed through the defense. With only three players, they had to almost let it go through. Pat Coyle, the closest defender, number six. Accordingly, in there being talked to Tavares, number 11, gets the first goal of the game. He is the MVP of the league, certainly the MVP of the Turbos, I mean, of the Buffalo Bandits. We featured him in our open, and he will be somebody to watch, without question, the best player in the league. Family now 5-1-4. One, one player came out of the box, but they're still a man up. Still one player in the penalty box for 45 seconds. Yeah, no, 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 no. Each other. All right, Christy, the game's starting off seconds. pretty physical. What do you got over there? Leap, this is exactly what we talked about in the open. The Detroit Turbos had to stay out of the penalty box right off the bat. They get two guys in there, and we know the band has scored on the power play. They are killers when you get them down. So these guys have got to contain their tempers and stay out of that penalty box. They're going to win this game tonight. And Christy, the penalties really were not, uh, were not really needed. One was a mugging off the ball, the other a holding before a defensive check. So Detroit has to be smart. So far, it's cost them only one goal. Right now, they're facing a five on four for 12 more seconds. This ought to eat up that penalty and make them all even. First time in a little over two minutes. Adam Mueller from Michigan State. Brings the ball up, number 16 for Detroit. Now he gives it off to fresh legs off the bench. Meredith had a huge game last time, number 14. Watch him. He had four goals the last time they played, which was only last week. The final game of the regular season. Pete Park, a hand for it, 6'5", 220. Park looks in close. He's got Miller and he's got rope. Beautifully done. Peter Park draws a crowd, and Mueller cut inside him. Mueller also had a great game last week. Watch Mueller cut to the left, takes the feed from Park. Park had two and three defenders, beats Geary. It's one to one, 10 26 left. Quarter, you're looking at Adam Mueller. There's Christy Lee behind him. She's parked on that Detroit bench for the first quarter. Buffalo got the first goal on a power play. Detroit came right back, worked it from Peter Park to Adam Mueller. Park really gets your attention. He's huge. And Mueller just slid inside him. Now again, the Detroit offense. Boyle comes in right in the face of Bill Geary, number 39, the goalie. Bill Geary sat on the bench most of the year. Les Bartley for Buffalo feels confident in either goalie, but Cowie was the number one guy until late in the season. And Geary has been hot. He was into action in the Boston game. Finished that game as the MVP. Had an 86% save percentage last week against this team from Detroit. So he gets the nod tonight. A lot of pushing in the cylinder and a delayed call against Buffalo. So Detroit's going to get a power play. They'll get a free shot first. Dowling wants to make a count. Goes for rope. Big save. No goal. 17. 17. Follow-up shot went in, but it did not count. Hey, 17. Watch Dowling push himself in, beat the defense, comes right into the face. First one save. Now he's in the crease. Play is over because with a penalty that's on delay basis, you only get one shot. You're out. You're down. So Brian Hall goes into the penalty box for two minutes on a roughing call. And Detroit gets their first penalty play. Lee Felsmo, Christy Lee, bring you our ESPN2 coverage on the mothership. Meredith starts up front, the triggering the offense, and Nathan Beltman picks off the loose ball. He is mugged by Driscoll. Comes over toward the penalty box and leveled by Meredith. Greg Mallon calls a penalty on Meredith for the hit. Watch Meredith lay him out. The call is 
O'Shaughnessy gets You'll get more to absorb that hit, but the play is in the rule book that you must get a step That's his call. on a feed from the goalie. When the goalie makes an outlet pass, and the receiver, hey, hey. the guy receiving the ball, hey. is watching that ball, you've got to give him a chance to catch it and take a step before you blindside him. And the blindside hit will put Meredith into the penalty box. San Marino is taking charge of things on the field. Now Stu Aird starts the four on four. Each team with a man in the penalty box. Each team with one goal. Nine minutes left in the first quarter. Playing for the right of the championship. Here comes Courtney Lee with a shot. And it is scooped up by Dietrich. Keep playing. You got to Keep playing. No 10 seconds. It's even up. Rich Tamarino was getting the team to keep playing because even though you're in the crease, it doesn't really affect the game. They'll let the small infractions go to keep the game moving. Being hacked on is Dwayne Jacobs. He's a great shooter, part of the wild bunch. Driscoll trying to get open off the ball. Accordingly, against Jacobs. Accordingly, playing defense over. Finally picked up and intercepted by Tavares, number 11, for the Buffalo squad in the orange and black. Johnny Tavares, the best in this game. 94. Number 11 here is now Feltman, who's really stepped up his offensive game in the absence of some veterans who left the team this year. Feltman, number 32, controls the ball. Has 130 loose balls, Feltman does, at the end of the regular season. That is about one-third the total number of the Detroit team. Tavares, little scoop shot into the far side. Now they dish it back to Feltman. Bounce shot, saved by Dietrich. Looking at the transition going there. Great finishing teams back to Stewart. This is the shot by to his left. Driscoll. Still one to one. 754 left. First playoff game for 1994. The winner will play the winner of Philadelphia, New York. That will happen the 16th, right on ESPN at 2:30. Pete Park, he already has an assist, pulls his way in on Stu Aird, shoots wide to the right. Look at Pete Park. So tough to cover. Bob Hamley in against three defensive players for Detroit. Park comes back in, follows the plan, makes Hamley give it up. Teammate Ryan Nicula, Ryan Hall, number 17. The stick check that took the ball away from him. Hamley will have a shot, tries to go low, big save by Dietrich. Great ball movement by Buffalo, but Dietrich made the big slide. Brian Nicky to the far side. Again, Brian Hall takes a shot at Dietrich. A fan down low by Tyson Lias. A lot of shots. Can Dietrich hold up? Here comes Nick Ulaw, the defense, very active. Checked from behind by Adam Mueller, number 16. Holding Orange. Holding against Adam Mueller, number 16. A fresh shot clock at 30. A lot of offense. Aggressive defense by Detroit, taking away real good shots. But Dietrich has been forced to make about four saves on this one series. Ryan Hall, 17 now. Being played by Meredith. The switch, Park now on Hall. Hall's very quick, very small. Park stays with him for the moment. Hamley gets the loose ball. Look how important loose balls are. They've had six, seven shots in one series. Will they get another one? Park picks it up. No, finally back to Dietrich. The loose balls have given Buffalo four, five, six shot series. Time out. Time out Detroit doesn't like it, so they call you got your a timeout. Call. Shane time Sanderson out. wants to get that defense worked out. It's all tied at one. There are six minutes, 18 seconds left in the first quarter. Come on back to the odds in a moment. Presentation on ESPN. We're all tied at one in a playoff game, which is going to determine the championship of the Major Indoor Lacrosse League next Saturday. Which team from here will go to the championship game? You'll see that live on ESPN at 2:30 in the afternoon Eastern Daylight Time. Hope you can join us here on the bench. Leap. I'll tell you right now. Shane Sanderson in that huddle. He told his team. He said, "Hey, we we get the ball. We want to watch to see where the ball is. Slow it down. Keep possession and use it to our ability to score." Take your time. Slow it down. They're coming out a little too fast. Out of the tempo, and you're looking for one shot at the playoffs. Another shot on Bill Geary. He makes a save. I'm impressed, Chrissy, with what Detroit has done with the tempo of the game. They've had a lot of shots. I'm They've taken blocking. a lot on the defensive end, but minutes. not good shots. They're putting a lot of sticks on the offensive players. Right now, 
Uh, we've got a player coming into the bench for the Bandits. Uh, two minutes. And two minutes holding call on Suer. Suer gets two minutes in the penalty box. Right here. And again, Detroit will have a chance to take the, the lead. Ball, They'll have her. another power play. Five against four, triggered by number 14, Meredith. Meredith pushes the defense in. He's compressing the defense. Look how tight they get. The shot was wide, and here he takes it. One is it to the off the bench side. Shaughnessy now gives it to Tavares. This team from Buffalo, folks, can score man down. That's right, man down. But they are now four of their guys against five from Detroit. They can score in this situation better than anybody in the league. They've done it many times. They confuse you with good ball movement. Right now, Tavares is a little bit confused because Detroit set up a, a very, very patient wall of five defenders straight across the line of the goal. They didn't get over-anxious. They didn't give Tavares room to make some moves. Over and back, they'll call it on Detroit. You cannot take it to the offensive end of the field and then bring it back to the defensive end. Tavares on. A quick, fast break, underhand shot, saved by Dietrich. Tavares against three players. Shaughnessy helps not know this is Tyson Lyons. Jimmy Dalton, 32. Back to Lyons, he's got a hand of a shot. Watch Lyons come in, he's powerful and big. What a save by Dietrich. Off the defensive play, number 17, Terry Bullen. Bullen gets called for the hold. Terry Bullen is the co-captain, as I mentioned, the team leader. Fifty left in the first quarter, still tied at one. Tyson Elias now on the outside against Terry Pullen. Inside, close. Almost a shot. Feltman couldn't pick it up cleanly. And now here comes the offense. With 32 seconds left on the power play. Russell Index has Buffalo ahead 16 to 8. That's what gives them four, five, six shots in the offensive end. But Dietrich has been exceptional. And now here is Detroit with a chance to go ahead. This is their power play. They have not gotten good shots. There's a rebounding backdoor shot by Ted Dowling. Four seconds left on the penalty. Meredith takes the last shot, tries to get it to Driscoll, did not get it. Shot clock expires. So they blew the opportunity. I tell you, you're not doing much when you have a power Playing. You're going to get a shot on the goal. So Shane Sanderson will have something to say about that. Meanwhile, Lance levels Brian Nicola, number 12. Don't do it again, for Buffalo. You'll get two minutes next time. You hear Rich Tamarino saying you'll do it again. You'll get two minutes next time. You let it go that time. It was a technical violation. Brian Hall takes a shot. Dieter comes out beautifully to cut the angle. Shoulder save. Nicola, number 12, could not pick it up. Now deep in the corner is Glenn Lay. Glenn Lay comes out. Big defense by Detroit. Knocks the ball loose. The ground ball is the push. Really a number Move that on. Buffalo controls. The team concept has them controlling. The ground ball is led by Jim Belton. Tavares is second in the league. The top five ground ball guys of the year are Buffalo Bandits. Wayne Jacobs, 21. Elias. Elias with an over-the-head check, but doesn't get it cleanly and off the pipe. Still one-to-one -one with 3.25 left in the first. Ball goes all the way back to Dietrich. Dietrich comes out. Look at this. He's going to put six men on it. It puts men on this early in the game. Detroit now with no goalie, six players against five. They are pulling out all the stops early in the game. All right, penalty is what's providing the opportunity for them, so there was a delayed call. Pick up the penalty. I thought they were pulling all the stops. Wrong. They had a delayed call. Brian Hall two minutes, had made. Ball. Five positions, folks. It's right here in the penalty box. Part of our juice coverage. Unique positioning. Brian Hall now spent a little bit of time. The next two minutes until he pulls down. He's not happy. I guess you get that. Hint. Okay, here's the ball. Rich Tamarino now gives it to Meredith. But they'll have another chance with three minutes to go in the first quarter. The score one to one. Buffalo has really done a great job of keeping this power play for Detroit from being very effective. But they'll have to stand up to two more minutes again. This is tough to do. 
Mostly we're talking about them being controlled. Detroit, they have been, but this power play has been a little bit pitiful so far. They're putting a lot of pressure on the defense, a lot of pressure on Bill Geary. Finally make it pay off. Not on that shot. There's Kilgore, number 43, brings it down with Stu Air to his left. Kilgore, big and strong from Nazareth. Comes into Stu Air, and he's got Sproul. He's got Sproul. Sanderson can't believe it. I talked about how great this team could be. Man down. Look at Dietrich. It's a fast break. Giving it over to Aird. He gets the goal. Man down to go ahead 2-1. to one. Don't miss all the action of the NASCAR Winston Cup. Sunday, April 10th, 1 p.m., 10 a.m. Pacific time. The Bristol International Raceway in Bristol, Tennessee. Great racing on ESPN. Right now, we're at the Alden Buffalo. Stu Aird. His, this guy oh, man, is one of the greatest stories in the league. Set. He is a second-team All-Pro. He turned 37 this month in this game. Lacrosse, you get the feeling so far, I'm sure, is a very physical, fast game played by young guys. Stu Aird's a great athlete, knows where he's supposed to be at all times, conserves energy at all times, and can do it all. This year, he's been an impact player for Buffalo. So Detroit, after squandering another power play, has a chance yet to score. Watch out. The ball loose. They're not getting good shots. Finally, Jacobs gets one. But again, it did not reset the shot clock. They have not really gotten good shots against Geary. I think they are waiting too long. If I'm Shane Sanderson, I'll say, look, when you're in that close from the top points, fire it at Geary and put some pressure on him. They are making two and three passes, and they don't make it cleanly enough. The great defense for Buffalo is taking away all their shots. What they need to do, the Detroit Turbos, is get some hard shots on the goalie. Right now, 38 seconds left on the penalty to Brian Hall, who just saw the Steve Buffalo score man down. All right, they gave that one away. Shot clock violation. They just wanted to eat up the 30 seconds. Detroit was patient. They'll get the ball back. They'll have 30 seconds left in this penalty. Oh, they throw it to Pete Park. You didn't see it coming. Detroit, the purple and silver. Buffalo, the home team. The defending world champions in the orange and black. Velvet it out of the sky. Again, Detroit trying to pass to you can't do it again. Watch Sarah's Kilgore. He couldn't pick up the fast break. Beltman tried to get another man down goal, and they were a little too anxious. Three seconds left. Shane Sanders stands up in the air. What is going on? He wants his team off. He wants fresh legs on. Again, another powerful opportunity gone to waste. Stuart gets the ball checked out by Rennick. Terry Bowen couldn't pick it up in the hall. 17 against 17, Brian Hall against Terry Bullen. Bullen about 8 inches taller than Brian Hall. Height doesn't do it for you in this league. 50 seconds. The, short, the shorter player with power can do all the impact stuff in this league because there's such a great change of direction in Major League Lacrosse. Again, a penalty against Detroit. Lancey was holding down Tavares. I think Lancey will get the call. Let's see what happens. Accordingly takes a shot. And he pays for it. Still, they have the ball. They have a chance to get a shot before the penalty. Shot clock violation with 25 seconds left in the first quarter. A 2-1 to lead for Buffalo. They'll be on the power play. John Lancey comes into the box. He was playing defense against John Tavares. 2-3, blue, rough, 2-3, blue, rough. Roughing was the call. Two minutes. <laughs> And look at Dietrich, he's got an equipment problem, so he'll go to the sideline. So again, with 25 seconds left, they'll have a two-minute penalty. Buffalo, you watch, they'll get a good shot on Dietrich, and they've been working Dietrich out. He is tired. I'll be back with the closing moments to the first quarter. Stay with us. Tonight, he has kept us the minute. Look at the pressure he's been under. The ball comes down low as he came out to make the save. And he has to make the save on the back door shot. He does by sticking his stick out right in the face of the shooter. 15 saves already for Dietrich. That puts him on an incredible pace for 70 saves if he can keep it up. I don't know, or 60 saves rather if he can keep it up. Ball down low, power play. They don't get the shot. Rosa makes the defensive call. 10 seconds left in the quarter. Buffalo, orange and black, the defending champions on a power play. Five of their players against four. Detroit Turbos. Now they rotate around. There's Kilgore. Hard shot. Shoulder save. DJ 
Patrick is exceptional in the first quarter. He's kept his team in it. The clock winding down. That'll do it. First quarter ends. Detroit has a lot of squandered opportunities on the power play. When the second quarter starts, Buffalo will be a man up. They are up by one goal, two to one. We're heading into the second quarter. Back to the odd in Buffalo. The defending world champion Buffalo Bandits a slim two to one lead. Hey, tomorrow night, ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. 8 p.m., the Florida Marlins versus the San Diego Padres. 8 p.m. live, that's Eastern time. Exclusive ESPN Sunday Baseball coverage. Tonight, folks, they're thinking about playoffs. If you look at the first quarter stats, Buffalo leading in every category, 18 to 10 in shots, 19 to 13 in loose balls, and they seem to dominate that category every game. Okay, Face-offs even, man. that's a surprise. The Buffalo Bandits the fans, the seventh right man who told you about that story, they really give their team a lift. The seventh man has been a big boost to the success of this program. Still five on four. They switch goals. This is Buffalo going against the four players. Back door, no. They try to get the back door shot. Couldn't quite put it in. That was Tavares. Here he comes out. And they'll give the ball a back court violation. Gives it back to Detroit. There is a minute and 11 seconds left for the penalty on Lansing. Detroit. Now this is Detroit, the purple and silver, with a man short. Wayne Jacobs comes on. 20 seconds on the shot clock. They have to be very careful. Four guys for Detroit. You'll see Buffalo. Go ahead and let them work the perimeter. Buffalo will stay in a box with a man in the middle. They just want to go ahead and give them the 30 seconds and hopefully get a shot when they get the ball back. And that's exactly what they did. Peter Park tried to pick it up with good defense. Now, here comes Darius Kilgore, number 43 for Buffalo. He waits for the power play to get back on and back up. He knows he has about 37 seconds. Money to get a good shot. He just want to get the one goal. Hamley triggers from up top, down low, up to Darius Kilgore. Kilgore with a great fake move. Tried to get it back accordingly. Worked a great give and go there. And here's Hammer with a shot against Dietrich, but Dietrich has been sensational. Development dishes it off now, back up to Hamley. Kilgore with another shot and another glove save. They're going to the glove side, but Dietrich taking the glove and save. Kilgore again, he's close, and he misses the corner. Development, shot clock down to 23. Penalty down to six. They try to give it to Darius Kilgore, but he's defended by Rosa. Oh, we'll go back now to Detroit. Rosa with a great defensive play. Rosa, Terry Bullen, getting the appeal to the refs. Boyle and Brian Hall going at it. Here comes Bob Hamley, number 28. He rockets up the field, gets checked for behind by Ciccone. Gives it off to Nicola, who could not find the handle. Number 12, Dietrich picks it up for a loose ball. They try to push it back up. Christy Lee, the pace is exactly what we thought it would be. What's the Buffalo bench look like? Well, I'll tell you, Leaf, I was able to listen in on Les Bartley's little pep talk to his team just a few moments ago. The first thing he said is, keep doing the things we're doing well, the loose balls, the face-off. And Leaf, you and I talked about this early. Detroit is in a disadvantage in the face-off situation, missing one of their best face-off guys tonight. But he also said, in a power play situation, go right on Dietrich. So we might want to watch for that coming up a little bit later on, if we get back into that situation. Chrissy and the faceoffs can be critical. They dominated faceoffs last week. Buffalo did, and it was Derek Graham who has been the sensational faceoff man throughout the year. Derek Graham is not with him, but this is Tyson Elias finding rope. He's a young talent, and he just did it all by himself. Three to one, Buffalo. Watch how strong Elias is. He comes in against the defense of Driscoll. Elias. This rookie is impressive. One of the rising stars for the Buffalo Bandits. Tyson Elias. Next time we get a close-up of him, you'll see his face mask. He is cut away. He has just opened up the top by his eyes. A ball can go in there. He customizes to keep just the part around his jaw. He wants the open vision. He has to be some vulnerable. But that's the way he likes it. Brian 
ridiculous try to race down and get the fast break. Three to one now. Buffalo leads to get the first goal in the second quarter on an exceptional effort by Tyson Lias. 11.52 left in the half. There he is. Look at that mass. He cut away the top bars. He's open for hits. Matter of fact, he took stitches earlier this year. Came back on and played because of that open area above his jawline. All right, another penalty this time. It'll be Dowling. Number 19 coming back to the penalty box. Christy Lee talked about it. If Detroit puts themselves in the penalty box, and let me remind you folks, we haven't talked about it too much, but Detroit leads the league in penalties. If they continue to give power play opportunities to Buffalo, they'll be in trouble. That shot after the play puts Dowling in the box. Dowling is really killing his team by going in the penalty box. Two players in the box will be playing the even. Christine, what do you have for us? Well, before we get into this power play situation, we have a guy who just scored a goal for us. Tyson Lyons and the Buffalo Bandits. Tyson, we were discussing your face mask a little bit earlier. Can you explain the uniqueness of it for us? Well, it is. It's all through junior lacrosse, some St. Catherine's. I've been used to playing without a mask. Same with out west. It's, it's just a security, I guess. I can see more of the ball, more of the playing field. This thing, I don't even like this, but you need something in this league. Well, that was an incredible goal, and keep up the good work. Tyson Lyons, a rookie leave on this Buffalo Bandit team. And he is a handful. Here's Stu Aird, the great veteran. Game across, left to the front. Oh, Howard gets the board. Aird will have another shot. Dietrich makes yet another save. And this will be a call against... Looks like another turbo. I think Kit Rennick is going to go in. Both 11s. Tavares, what? Tavares getting nailed from behind right there by Kit Rennick, number 11. This is the call that they want to take out of the game. This is so dangerous. Not only is it from behind, but it's high up to the neck area. Very vulnerable against the boards. That's why Rennick is going to spend some time in the box. Tavares, is he resilient? Yes. Is he great? You bet. MVP in the league. But taking a hit like that hurts every bit as much as it looks, folks. This is not ice. You don't slide. You don't have as much protection. You get rocketed into the boards, and it is a powerful hit. There's Kilgore. Over to Johnny Tavares. Now it's four on three. A lot of guys in the penalty box. Oh, Kilgore takes one off the pipe. Geary comes out, makes the save. You're looking at four on three. And Dietrich, who is so tired from taking a lot of shots early. Kilgore again. In low, back door, Ruth. Right now, he'll come into the penalty box. I don't think we've played more than maybe what 
like five minutes of this game, would you guess? Two of the teams were of even strength. It's always been somebody in the box. Right now, it'll be Detroit with the power play. They have not shown anything. If I'm Shane Sanderson, I want to tell this team, go ahead and fire from right there. Go ahead and put some pressure on Geary. You take the outside shot. They've been trying to work it too much. There's an outside shot and a save by Geary. Ball goes back to Buffalo. They have plenty of time. Detroit doesn't they just remain patient. Ryan Hall takes it down. He's going against there. Does Hall may want to shoot. He comes in close looking for Rowe. Just goes wide. Push call against Detroit. Gives the ball back to the Buffalo Bandits. They have the four to one lead. There's nine minutes left in the first half. And now they can eat up another 30 seconds. The penalty is two aired. A minute and 30 left on that. So this will take it down close to a minute. They'll look for an opportunity here. And as the time gets close to the end, Tyson Elias, whoever has the ball, will just dish it off to the corner. They're just gonna go ahead and waste all the time. Now watch him, we'll just put it down to the corner, whoever has it. Six seconds left. Well, maybe they'll get a shot if they can. Oh, picked off a of midair. This is the dangerous part. Accordingly takes a shot as the shot clock went down to one. Greg, Greg, Dietrich Greg. under pressure again. He has been sensational. The last time these two teams met last week, Dietrich did not have a great game. 62% save percentage, which is really not good in the league. The league averaged a little over 70. Meanwhile, then on the field, Geary was having 82 save percentage things. Right now, Geary is playing well, and Dietrich has been on top of his game. Most exceptional game of the year for Steve Beaker. Ball comes down, trying to find him toward the box area. A lot of trouble trying to get open. Tavares getting checked from behind. Off stick hand. Hold. Ball on Pat Boyle. Technical foul. Gives it back to Buffalo. Eight minutes left. Four to one. They lead. Trying to figure out who's got who. We've got a man advantage still for Detroit. So Buffalo with the ball. Is playing four players against the five right for Detroit. Tavares gets called for a moving pick. Pat Boyle levels him as he tries to run off the field. Pick with 11 yards. I'll tell you what, there's a lot of hitting off the ball. When you're watching the action, you watch the periphery because a lot of hits are coming on players that don't have the ball. Four to one. Here's the power play again for Detroit. Back up to Meredith. He'll shoot on Gary. The ball doesn't get through the defense. Smothered by Belton. Meredith reloads. 15 seconds. Jacobs bounces it. Gary, big save. Another one swept away. Dowling trying to get one. Comes in, looks for air. He's got rope. Finally, Dowling and Detroit get a golden power play. There was only one second left in the power and the penalty to Stu Aird. Watch the tenacity from your left. Dowling will come in and just beat the players. Dowling loves to come from the corner, comes in, beats two players. Four to two, a two goal lead for Buffalo. Your lacrosse league championship game can be seen right here on ESPN starting at 2.30 p.m. live Eastern Daylight Time next Saturday. We want to see you. We're at the Odd in Buffalo where we have a score of 42 bandits are leading. And I want to make this observation really quickly. Stu Aird just came out of the penalty box and you may have noticed he's nursing his shoulder. He got cross-checked pretty hard on his shoulder blade and they're putting ice on it every time he comes to the bench. So you might want to watch out. Stu Aird having some great games this season, but he might be a little bit players playing with some injuries and now we know Stu Aird has won. Troy Courtney, we might tell you, has been nursing a sore heel the whole year. Courtney, number 40. Aird, number 36. Both playing less than 100% at this point. Darius Kilgore was out for one whole game. It's a hold. The ball stays on. Old call against Buffalo oh, City. Now they're going to give us back to Buffalo. Teams now at even strength. Nobody in the penalty box. That's rare playing five against five. That's the normal load, folks. Each team allowed 17 players. You play five on the field. So you've got three lines, basically, running so they can't breathe anymore. And they come on. About two runs up and down the field. And fast break. Here comes Mueller. He's got him for a trailer. And he's written off by Brian Silcott. Mueller, number 16, from Michigan State. Great player. Easy. Silcott played at Nazareth. And he rode him off. And now play back to Geary out of the goal. Beat Park trying to get to him. And there's another help by Rosa. Geary's in trouble. He comes out alive with the ball. Give it to Silcott. Great play. Accordingly, looking for help now. Doesn't see it. Troy takes the shot himself and an easy kickoff by Dietrich. That was a surprise shot by Courtney. Maybe he thought he was catching Dietrich by surprise, but it was really not a great shot. Courtney a little bit 
well, you might say, surprised at his own lack of sport. The last to start off so hot. Timeout called by Detroit. 42. Bandits lead. 6.15 left. And Shane Sanderson calls a timeout with his team on offense. He wants to get a goal. We'll be back to the yard with our deuce coverage on the mothership of major indoor lacrosse. Auditorium, Lee Felsmo and Christy Lee. This is our ESPN2 coverage on ESPN as we move toward the playoffs. Two of them this weekend. The championship is next week live on ESPN. The 16th, it's a Saturday, 2.30 Eastern time. Don't miss it. You can tell this game is exciting and great to watch. There's a shot, the play called, and the timeout by Shane Sanderson gives the ball to his veteran, Meredith. And Jim Meredith from Ontario came off a pick and gives them their third goal. They're back to within. Watch him move off the pick of Mueller. He comes in, makes a little move. Accordingly, does not come out to pick him up. And he beats Geary with a shot. They really haven't shot too much on Geary. Watch Geary open up the shot, the side to his right. He doesn't give him much to shoot at, but there it goes, hip high, right to the far pipe. That play was called in a timeout. They got possession of the ball. Shane Sanderson called a timeout. He must have known what he wanted, and he got it. Back to within one. This was a nail fighter for the home folks here in Buffalo. Four to three with 5.30 left in the first half. Rich Kilgore. Detroit gets the ball back. I'll tell you what, one of the big stories in this first half will be the play of Steve Peter in the goal. For Detroit. He has been exceptional. It's really the reason this game is so close. A lot of scoring so far on power plays. The open 5 on 5 defenses have dominated. Driscoll, part of the wild bunch, far side. Watch out, looking for rope, big save. A follow up and a goal. Driscoll. to the break saying we're on the deuce but well, don't get man. confused don't call your cable operator this is our deuce presentation on ESPN we've had a 12 game regular season Monday night coverage and this is our playoff two playoff games this being one of them and then live championship coverage on ESPN on the 16th this now an all important game for that championship but it's tied at four four to one was the score with Buffalo in command but then Detroit came back with three straight goals to tie it up. They look very calm and confident. Ciccone now, number two, moving around against Brian Hall, defending. Dowling getting it deep in the corner. Tyson Lyons playing defense, and Ciccone comes in to make a pick against his defender. Shot clock violation. It'll go back now to the Buffalo Bandits. Brian and Hall. First line comes back on. Christy Lee, we're getting kind of tight here with not much time left in the first half. Boy, I'll tell you, Leaf, this bandit bench is really excited because they just scored a goal. That's why we just told this team. Hey, Bob Anley, you guys, we need to tighten our defense and then open them up on the other end. And it seems to have worked because Hammer's had another goal here at the odd, and that puts them ahead by one goal. These teams play tough every time. Second time, there was a close win, but then the bandits took it away, 18 to 10. How could that happen again? Well, we'll have to wait and see, Lee. And Hammer Hamley, as you can see, getting a shot against the defense that was giving attention to the wings. That's his second goal of the night. The Hammer making an impact. 
to four. Buffalo now leads with three minutes left in the half. Courtney Lee looking for Rope. A big save by Dietrich. Courtney playing on that sore heel. The ball is given up now to Rosa. Courtney Lee drags him down the field. Dowling now gets it deep. Dowling likes to take it down in the corner and work from there. Against Duer now tries to find Park. Looking for Rope. He can't find the net. Ball starts from behind. It gets Geary turning both ways. Release! Release! tough on the goalie when they start the ball from behind because then of course he has to pivot tough for him to get a good read and get in the proper position shot clock violation how many times has that happened too many for shane sanderson and his offensive team you've got to get some heat on the goalie you don't want to give up any opportunity it's happened too many times in detroit they are playing well though it's five to four anybody's ball game indoor lacrosse if you're within three goals you can do it, believe me. You score fast in major indoor lacrosse. Jimmy Belton, number 32, gets checked by Coyle, tries to get it inside to Kilgore, and who tried to give it back to Belton? Belton wearing the C is one of the captains. Geary attracts the defensive park and gives it back to him. Now watch Cordingly looking for the corner. A big save by Dietrich. Cordingly now, Cordingly now will come off. Fresh legs will come on to play defense. It'll be Hartle, 21. We're down to a minute 53, under two minutes with a one-goal lead for Buffalo, but Detroit has the ball. Meredith, this man had four goals last week. He was the leader in the offensive end for Detroit against the same Buffalo Bandits. Uh-oh, this is a good matchup for them. Stuart against Mueller. Mueller's young and big. He comes in, beats Derry with the first step in the crease. Or a pick violation, I believe, but call. Buffalo ball, 1.32 left. First half. One goal lead for the defending champions in the orange and black. Tavares is lying now, switches up with Hammy. It's been very effective. You know that. He's got two goals, so they're not losing anything to this line. Darius Kilgore. He can shoot from there. The big right hand looks in close. Shut us. He can't find it. Ball's loose. This is usually won by the Buffalo Bandits. They are so tough, but this time Lee comes up big. Lee being right behind, he gives it up. And he is hammered afterwards. That'll be a penalty against Darius Kilgore. So now Detroit will be extra, plus they get a shot. It's a delayed call. Detroit switching some players around. Shot clock down to 13. They'll get a shot, and then they'll have a penalty situation. They want to make a count, though. They want a good shot. Driscoll comes in. Back door! No! A big save by Gary. Blows, 38 seconds left, a one-goal lead for Buffalo, but Dwayne Jacobs shaking his head because he knows they will be man down. Geary now makes a big save down low, look back door, he just brushes it enough to take it to the pipe. The splits for Bill Geary, and Darius Kilgore will come into the penalty box, two minutes on him, 38 seconds left in the half. Unnecessary roughness is the call against Darius Kilgore. It came on the clearing play, away from the benches. They had given the ball up, Detroit did, and Darius just leveled the player into the boards. Now they'll try to lock and load the power play. Meredith up top, Meredith making a couple fakes. Watch it, far side, Crystal misses it. That's 18 square feet, four by four and a half. Now come Meredith with 15 seconds left on the shot clock. 19 in the first half, back to Meredith. He can't get a shot because of Jimmy Beltman. But finally, Dowling comes up, looks in close the park, looking for Rope, can't get it. Big defensive push. Buffalo so tough, clogging up the middle. Five seconds left, and this is the way the half will end again. They burn up a power play for Detroit. Detroit's power play is killing them. If they score on a half of their power plays, Detroit would be ahead, but they're not. Buffalo leads five to four. A slim lead as they go into the half. We'll be back with our Deuce coverage on ESPN and an all-pro feature from the odd in Buffalo. Never get a second chance to make a first impression. Welcome to our Coors Light Halftime Report. It is a sensational game, everything we expected. The stats for the first half show you the Buffalo with a slim lead. 
shots on goal, they lead dramatically, 35 to 18. And if Detroit takes more shots, Buffalo will be in trouble. Loose balls, 34 to 28 in control of Buffalo, as we expected. Save. It's all in the Detroit area because the goalie, Steve Dietrich, has been under intense pressure, but he has come up big. 30 saves. That's incredible. Face-offs in the favor of Buffalo. But the big key there is the last stat, too, is that the power play, the power play, really totally ineffective for Detroit. And they have gotten goals in the power play on the Buffalo side. As a matter of fact, they scored when they were a man down. If Detroit scored on half of their power plays, they'd be leading right now. And Buffalo and Detroit, I'm sure, are talking about that right now in the benches. Talk about shooting. Well, let's show you the shot charts to give you an idea of how effective the offenses have been. The turbos. Five shots right in the middle of the red zone. No goals to show for it. That is critical. Too much moving the ball around, allowing the defense to get sticks on their shots. Their goals come from the wings. Three and one. That is really critical. They've got to get goals from the red zone. The turbos moving the ball a little too carefully for the bandits. They have moved it around nicely, but you can see two goals from the red zone, two from close on the back door. Those are back door shots. Remember Hammer Hamleys. They have been moving the ball well and getting the shots and the goals right in the face of Dietrich. So it's a close game. One goal lead by the Buffalo Bandits, the defending champions. We'll be back with third quarter action from the odds in just a moment. Buffalo, Leaf Elsmo, Christy Lee. It's our ESPN2 coverage on ESPN, the mothership. We are giving you a dose of this fabulous sport, major indoor lacrosse. We've gone through 12 regular season games every Monday night on the Deuce. You'll also see this Monday night, the other playoff game. It'll be on the Deuce Monday night. But right now, second half action. Belton comes in at the opening faceoff of the second half and almost gives Buffalo another goal. Buffalo in the orange and black, the defending champions, two-time defending champions. Have a slim one-goal lead, five to four the score. And if you're wondering if that's a big score, it's not. They are under their elite, their yearly averages, both teams. So right now, this game has been dictated by defense and the goalies. The Bandits average 15 goals a game. The Turbos average 12 goals a game. Shaughnessy now brings the ball down with. The second offensive set after Beltman exploded off the faceoff right into the face of Dietrich. And that's something we remember. Dietrich, who had such a great first half, something like 30 saves on a 60-save pace, made the first save only seconds into the second half. Detroit in the purple and silver. Five is three on the year. That check goes right to his face. Takes his helmet. That'll give them a delayed penalty. Whoa. Already, Darius Kilgore is in the penalty box. Tavares checked and just caught his face mask. This will be tough. Watch Tavares come in and just catch him in the face. Coyle maintains composure. Again, John comes in, tries to swat at the stick, and doesn't even get close. Anything up around the head gives him trouble. So now there'll be two men down. Five against three. Second now, Darius Kilgore comes in too late. It'll be Driscoll with a shot on Bill Geary. And the penalty was up on Kilgore, which means Tavares goes back in too. So they got a break, even though they scored a goal to tie it up. Five to five with a power play goal. We talked about the power play. I'm sure in the halftime, they talked about getting shots out front like that. Pressure on Geary. They weren't doing this in the first half. They weren't putting tough for shots on him. Here, a good shot from out front finally makes Geary do something in the goal. He has been sensational, but not tested to the extent that the other goalie, Steve Dietrich, for Detroit has, so five to five. And again, a break as we look at Shane Sanderson. The penalty to the first man, Darius Kilgore, had just expired when they scored the goal. And the goal gave the other man, that was John Tavares, the opportunity to regain the game. So now we're back to even strength. A break for Buffalo. If it had been scored moments before that, Tavares would have had to stay in the, in the penalty box for another two minutes, or close to two minutes. Dowling now in the corner. He gets doubled by accordingly and held by Darius Kilgore. Technical foul. Ball goes back to Detroit. 5-5. Five, five. Let me tell you something. Detroit is sending some shockwaves through the odds. You all know at home how tough it is to beat a good team three times in one year, and that's what 
Buffalo has to do. Can they? We're not sure. It's tied at five. They beat Detroit twice this year already. 17 to 16 in the first game that they met early in the season. Very close game, obviously. And then they beat them last week, the last game of the regular season. And that was not quite as close. But 18 to 10 was the score there. Glenn Lay for Buffalo against Terry Bullen. Lay to Brian Nikulov, takes the shot to the far side, and it did not even hit the goal. Shot clock still counting down. The ball is out of bounds. It'll be given to Detroit. I don't want you guys Detroit now with the ball, and Pete Park, number nine, he likes to park himself, as it were, down close to the goal. He starts up high here. Meredith, 14. Adam Mueller, 16. Big game last week. Mueller comes in, looks for air. to cover the angle and leaves a little bit of open space to his left and Adam Mueller finds it. Six to five. Two goals scored in the third quarter, both by Detroit. Shane Sanderson got some things squared away. With all the opportunities in the first half, Detroit didn't have the lead but they had the opportunities and they're taking advantage of them in the third quarter. Something to think about. Dietrich playing great will probably stay in the goal unless he is banged up, hurt, or shot. Not quite true in the Buffalo goal. Bill Geary has been sharing time with Ross Cowley. You be the coach. How long do you let Bill Geary stay in there? When do you go to Ross Cowley, who has started most of your games this year? Cowley was the number one guy. He's on the bench. We'll see. Driscoll comes in, tries to find it. Rowe doesn't get it. Big save by Billy Geary. What a year he's had. Second team all pro. Ayer comes in against Jacobs. Jacobs has a size advantage and youth advantage. Ayer, very good off the ball. Gives to the cutting player. Tavares slams on throw. Dietrich can't believe it. Tavares gets it from Ayer. committed. Again, Dietrich will commit to the first bank up high off his feet and then it's just laid in behind him. What a play by Tavares. That, folks, is why he was voted by his peers, voted by the players, to be the most valuable player in the major indoor lacrosse league. 6-6. Six six. Third quarter, Sanderson has to be happy. His team is right in this game. It was in Detroit earlier this year where the Detroit Turbos had an 8-1 to one explosion to almost beat the Turbo, or beat the Bandits in the first matchup of the season. And they match that today. That one comes off the pipe. Geary picks up. Geary can't find it. He's looking for help with the ref. Where's the ball? He finally was covering it up. The goalie's protected by the crease. Once he, had, once he has possession in that little circle around the goal, you cannot go in there and challenge him. Buffalo Bandits. This is Tavares, number 11, just scored the last goal from Stu Aird. He can shoot from out there. Tries to give it inside to the hammer. Hamley was locked up by Lancey, so Lancey gets caught for the hole. They'll give it back to Tavares up top. He'll reload this tough offense accordingly. Troy Courtney, second year man. Great player. He gets wrapped up by two players. He's got to give it up. He does it. Oh!
the rest. Okay. This man will not be in the league next year. I can guarantee you. That's a Bush move of the highest degree. Matt Coyle does not belong in the league, and the league won't stand for that kind of behavior. That's a Bush call. There's Coyle making that move. That's not very much of a man coming in there and hitting a guy when he's down. And then he goes up and hits a referee. Forget the respect part. The referee doesn't have any equipment on. But the respect's all you need to make sure Coyle doesn't walk back on the field anymore in this league, and I can assure you he will not. Greg Mallon seems to be okay. Ten minutes left. Okay. Two goals were released by play. Six to six. Rich Tamburino is getting it all set out. Matt Coyle's gone. Detroit will be a man down for a long time. We'll be back. Buffalo has a chance to take over the game. Buffalo, where we're all tied up. Six six. Pat Coyle of the Detroit Turbos has been ejected from this game. Just moments before that ejection, Pat Coyle. Before I think that will take Detroit out of the game. They are six and six in score. But Pat Coyle, with a brainless move like that, is killing his team's chances of ever winning this game. The guy shouldn't be on the field, and he's not. Shane Sanderson has lost control because of the stubbornness of Pat Coyle. Now his team has to pay the price. They have a ton of guys in the penalty box. The first shot saved by Dietrich. Follow up, watch out. It's still loose. The ball down around the feet. Picked up by Cordingly. Hold call. We'll give it back to Buffalo. Right now you're looking at five players for Buffalo in the orange and black against three for Detroit. I can tell you what the penalties are for Detroit. There are two men in the box. Back door. seconds on the shot clock. They've got 3.23 left on this five-minute major. Back door to Belton. He couldn't pick it up. Hamley picks it up nicely. Inside. Catch. There's Kilmar. Watch how they get it down low. Belton saves the loose ball. He does it so well. Now down low to Kilgore. Fakes inside. Shoots outside. Don't fault Dietrich. Here he takes the inside fake. Gives him a little bit of white, a little bit of rope. And Kilgore nails 
Mr. Pat Coyle. Coyle lost it. 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 Coyle lost
Texas, they have the killer instinct. And the seventh man wants blood. Nobody picks up Bellman. Nobody comes out. He keeps walking in and finally just picks his spot. Watch the stick high. No defender. No defender. Finally, he picks up the tenth goal of the game. Jimmy Bellman, 14th goal of the season. A lot of chatter there at the faceoff you heard by John Lancey, the faceoff man for Detroit. And Tamburino, the referee. Lancey wanting a ruling on some of the physical handling of the defense of Buffalo. That same man, John Lancey, picks it up and comes down the field. Finds Terry Bullen inside to the trailing player, but picked up by the human vacuum cleaner. Feldman gets it, and Lancey tackles John Tavares. It's only a technical call. It's a good play by Lancey because he only loses possession and probably saved the game. Or not saved the game, saved a goal. Watch this. Lancey has no chance. Tavares gets it. It's going to be a goal, so Lancey brings him down. And it wasn't a major foul, a technical foul. Only gives control back to Buffalo. A good play by Lancey. Had he been too rough with that check, it could have been two minutes in the box. Tavares, who tried to sweep it in, redirect it, but he's wide in the goal. Moving big, moving big, ball goes back to Detroit. Christy Lee, what do you have? Well, Leaf, I'll tell you, as you can imagine, here on the Detroit Turbo bench, people are frustrated. When Pat Coyle got ejected from this game, I wish you could have seen the reaction from his teammates. Ted Dowling of the Wild Bunch was absolutely devastated, Leaf, and this team has got to come back. Shane Sanderson knows that. He's trying to give his team the biggest back shots in all these timeouts. Let's see if that'll work, but they're down by four, so it's going to be a hard road to home. Pat Coyle had three goals on the year, three goals and three assists, so they're not going to miss much in the offensive end. Two on 32, I got it. Two on 32. Two-minute foul, holding 32. Here's Geary making the big save. He has looked sensational, and there's the help. Hartle comes in, and really was yanking Pat Lee around, but it was Jim Belton, number 32, as we look at Geary. Look at that custom paint job on the helmet. That's a beautiful paint job. Shot in a goal for Detroit. Their power play seems to really be kicking into gear. It was not in the first half, but Driscoll scores and gives that team a 10-7 look. Back to within three. Look how they're moving it beautifully and shooting from the outside. In the first half, they'd make one more pass. Not now. Now they're taking that shot and really getting some pressure on Geary. Geary is set, but can't keep up with the velocity of that shot. Stand by, Paul? I'm sorry. Three minutes left. We're going. Let's go. Third quarter. Three goal lead now as we look at Chris Driscoll. The wild bunch. Second goal tonight. It's still cut number four against Lance. who has been doing a great job. Buffalo dominated last week. They won of 33 face-offs. Tonight has been a little more of a close matchup. And I might even say Detroit has won more. So Buffalo probably came in a little smug thinking they would win these face-offs. But Lancey has been doing a great job. Down low. Here's just going the shot. Looking for rope and it goes wide and high. That'll go into the crowd. A souvenir. Fresh ball comes on and now it'll be Buffalo Bandits ball under three minutes. 22 left, a three-goal lead. That is striking distance. Major East World across. Detroit played this year on our news coverage against Baltimore, and those teams scored three goals in 30 seconds. Here's one for Kilgore. Dietrich is really wearing out. Where's the defense? Shane Sanderson saying keep the players out of his face. This man, there's Kilgore, took it right. After a check, Jacobs couldn't catch up with him. And again, another look at it. Jacobs can't keep up with him. And Kilgore, 6 feet, 215 pounds, right in the face of Dietrich with no backup defensively. Gets his second goal of the night. It's 11 to 7. Two goals, four assists for Darius Kilgore. Trying to get into Terry Bullock. Here he's out of the goal. Detroit. That shot by Kilgore gives it back to Detroit. Now they'll blow the whistle. 
Erie had come off the field and trying to get Buffalo a six on five with a delayed call. And with 128 left, Terry Bullen will go back into the penalty box. Tamburillo says he got his helmet. Let's take a look. 17 holes. Now watch the helmet of the goalie. Holes and keep his helmet. Uh, tough call. All the referees see is the helmet come off, but really that was not any blow to the head. Gary's helmet looks like it wasn't even fastened tightly, so Bullen gets a bad call there in my estimation. Of course, again, good call for the referees because they only see the helmet come off, and they don't have the benefit of replay. Buffalo. Dietrich seems to be wearing down a little bit. Shot, he gets a good save with the backup. Beltman. Accordingly, back to Hamlin. Back to accordingly. All the way over to Beltman for the shot. He's too far to the right. That's out of bounds. It'll give it to Detroit. With Dietrich wearing down, you've got to keep the shots on goal because he has really faced tremendous pressure. He cannot be as strong as he was early in the game. Park tries to get it into Dowling. It almost scored. Brian Hall up to Beltman. He looked for him, and Dietrich had to go from one pipe to the next, down knees, and made a sensational save. 11 to 7, less than a minute left in the third quarter. Adam Mueller. Geary comes out in double teams, nobody in the net. Push call gives it to Detroit. Wow, how about Bill Geary? Came out of the net and double teamed Adam Mueller, confident that he wouldn't be able to give up the ball take advantage of the empty net. Dowling likes to go deep in the corner, one-on-one. Feltman plugging it up. Park coming across the middle, could not collect the ball. Tavares is playing defense on him. Here's Tavares now. He's got a little bit of room, but one player in front. He's got Cordingley in the middle. And this is Darius Kilgore. With the juke move, double team, shot and a save. A spinning 180. Here comes Hammer. He can't get past Dietrich. With four score action, it's all on the line. All right, the King taking charge at the odd. Elvis, center stage. Yes, folks, this place is going wild. The King came out to the Village People's YMCA just before the fourth quarter started. Lee Fellsbo, Christy Lee, our deuce coverage, a special presentation of Adrian Newell across on ESPN. And here are your third quarter stats. Look at Buffalo doubling the shots and better than that, 24 to 10, 15 to 6, commanding the loose balls led by Jim Beltman. And the big stat throughout the game has been the power plays right now. You also saw in that graphic, five to three in faceoffs. The power plays, four goals scored by Buffalo, make it five. Tavares, I can't even see who made it. It was Tavares. Tavares, number 11 from the back door. They are wearing Dietrich out. John Tavares gets three so far tonight. The lead now a comfortable five goals, 12 to 7. Don't forget, before Pat Coyle pulled that brainless stunt, it was 6 to 6. And he took his team out of it by being thrown out of the game and putting two players in the penalty box. Buffalo scored two on that, and they've never looked back. 14 Joy, minutes to go, Tyson Joy. Lias is down. Hey! Are you okay? Rich Tamarino did not get a good response from Tyson Lias. They'll take a look at him. We'll take a short break. We are only one minute into the fourth quarter. A five-goal lead for Buffalo. Lias is being looked at. We'll be back to the odds in just a moment. Back 
to live action at the Audis, the fourth quarter. 15 to 7. I'm sorry, 12. To That's a five goal lead for Buffalo. Lee Felsmo, Chrissy Lee, bringing you our deuce coverage. Adrian on the cross. Brian Nikita comes in. Yes. Ninth goal of the season for Bryant, acquired from the defunct Pittsburgh franchise. Rosa gets the loose ball. It's do or die time for Detroit Turbo. Picked off by Arnold. Plainly, Rosa challenging for it. Now Meredith. Score by quarters will tell you the story. Look how close it was to that third quarter. And the third quarter was all knotted at six. And then at the end of the third quarter, a three-goal advantage, six to three. It was a big run because of the penalty situation that Pat Coyle put on his team. He gave the burden to carry by going off half cock against the referee. Holding call. Ball goes to Detroit. Good look at Bill Geary. He's had a great game. Both showing a lot of confidence. Could I have that round, please? Let me have that. Thank you very much. Ted Dowling goes into the box. No, it's your ball, but I want to make sure everybody knows where it starts. Referees have had a tough time it's these last few weeks. It's misconduct, so it's no extra man. There's no extra man, it's misconduct. Dowling shoots. Now that ball, look at he gets, looks to be a goal. And they're saying uh, no goal. I can tell you one thing, on that shot by Dowling, who's now in the penalty box because he mouthed off to the ref, you have to have both feet in front or on the plane of the goal. You can't do what Dowling just did. You can't be behind the goal and lay yourself out in front of the goal. One foot has to be up with that, and that's extra for players. Darius Gilbert takes a shot on the power play. It's now five against four. And Buffalo has been very, very lethal on their power play, just like we talked about. Christy was talking about that in the open. You don't want to give them the advantage, and Detroit has done that. They've scored four power play goals, one a man short. Watch out! provided by the Buffalo Hilton. Meanwhile, back to live action. The score 15 to 7. And stick around, folks, because coming up right after this game, Sports Center. That'll be next, right to the conclusion of our playoff game. While we are gone, Brian Nicholas scored. The score now 15 to 7, an eight-goal lead, and it's been all Buffalo. They have scored 10 of the last 11 goals ever since the Pat Coyle incident. When he shoved the referee, taking his team literally out of any chance to win this game. Meanwhile, Steve Dietrich has done everything his coach has asked. He's been sensational in the goal. But they played a man down. They played with 14 players, and Coyle literally, 
by being out with a major penalty, gave Buffalo the chance to go on a power play, and they scored two goals, and they were off and running. And again, as I mentioned, they can't collapse 11. Feltman looking for rope, goes wide. We're down to four minutes, 30 seconds. The eight-goal lead, too much for Detroit to overcome. Dietrich picks it up, bounces it to Pat Lee. And this team from Buffalo will be making their third straight appearance championship of indoor lacrosse. It'll be next Saturday on ESPN Live, 2.30 Eastern Time. Don't forget our regular Deuce coverage. Our regular season Monday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time coverage will happen this week with the other playoff game, Philadelphia against New York. Don't miss that. Looking close to scoring another goal. Accordingly gets it deflected by Dietrich. Mueller comes up, gets knocked down by Tavares. He can't handle him. Mueller back door. Park looks for rope. He's got it. Goal number eight for Detroit. Keep going, keep going. Great fast break. Mueller to Park and beating Bill Geary. Geary has been good enough. Watch how Adam Mueller, as strong as he is, comes right through the whole team. Mueller first will beat the defense from way back. Then here comes Darius Kilgore. That was Tavares who hit him first. Then Kilgore. Tavares trails the play. Does a beautiful job. Still doesn't stop him. Then he draws the defense of Hamley and gives it up to Park. He had all the attention of the defense, including the goalie. When he gave it up to Park, Park just had to sweep it into an open net. 15 to 8. Seven goal cushion. Tyson Lyons didn't see Rose up, but he still holds on and gets through. Lyons is unbelievable. Watch how he gets checked once, twice. There's a third swat at him. He doesn't know the player's there, and he still scores on Dietrich. That has a little bit disconcerting to Dietrich. He thought the ball would be checked. Watch, he doesn't see Rosa comes from the penalty box. He's coming out of the penalty box, makes one swipe, two swipes, three swipes, and Tyson Lyas scores. 16 to 8. 2.41. Lee Elmo, Christy Lee, and our ESPN 2 coverage, a special presentation on ESPN on the ace, the Uno, a mothership. season on the deuce every Monday night. There's a shot in close. And finally a follow-up finds nothing but white net. That'll be the ninth goal. Okay, you got it. Come on. 16 to 9, 222 okay. left. Dwayne Jacobs takes it in, gets a shot on Geary, but it's the follow-up shot by Park that finds the net. Seven goal lead with 222 left. Goals for Detroit. Two of the last three. Tyson Lyons scored in between there. The score now is 16 to 9. A very comfortable lead for Buffalo. Buffalo averages 15 and change for the year, so they're right on their yearly mark. And Detroit's not far from it. They average about 12. Lancey gets called for the push, and will go back to Buffalo. Shaughnessy inbounds. Accordingly, they get a shot off, and now it's Lemon back into Dietrich, who's gone the whole way. He's been in, under intense pressure and has held up beautifully. Been really burned by a lot of backdoor plays, and that's really a defensive team problem, not a goalie problem. Sacconi wraps it around his shoulder. You won't see those backdoor shots against Buffalo because of their team defense concept. You won't get the passes through the cylinder from one side to the next. It's been happening too much against the Detroit Turbos. That time, Pete Park is full. 2.26.5 frame. Wrapped in to get a shot on Geary. He's got two of the last two of the last goals in a row for Detroit. Two of the last three in the game. So Park is hot. He wants to run. 15 left. Crowd starting to warm up for a great post-game celebration. Yes, sir. Hartle. Tavares. Tavares. Great game. Three and three right now. Three goals, three assists. Mueller.
trip by Cordingley. Cordingley will spend two minutes in the box. Cordingley will be taking a rest for the rest of the game. There's only 56 seconds left. Adam Mueller, watch the lower left-hand corner of this. Cordingley puts his foot out and trips Adam Mueller. into the championship game. The key to the game for the Detroit team was not a positive one. Watch Pat Coyle. He gets called for a penalty. Then it's called a major. Five minute. He says, I don't like that. This move gets him shoved out of the league. Pat Coyle is not only gone from this game, he's gone from the league and his team is eliminated. Bad move for Pat Coyle. Next week, the championship game, live, Saturday the 16th, 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN. Join my partner, Christy Lee, and I for all the action. For everybody on our crew, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. The Bandits win 16 to 10.